Hello everyone, welcome to Fighting Fantasy Legends, a game based on the famous this, uh, Choose Your Own Adventure books, the Fighting Fantasy games. Now, I never actually grew up with the Fighting Fantasy games, however, I have played some of the YouTube, uh, re and Okay, would they be reimaginings, uh, remakes, or, I don't know, basically, you know, you play the fighting fantasy games as if you're on, you know, you're reading the book. So, we're gonna go and play this, and one thing I should point out is that I actually was given this key to do a review, or a let's play, or whatever of this. A thank you to the developers, and thank you, Ke uh, the uh, site that. Bleh, bleh. One moment. Thank you, Keymailer, for this. Yes, I am part of Keymailer, so I'm just being upfront about this that I was provided the key by Keymailer, and I really appreciate it. Okay, so... Hmm... It's a good name. Vulgan. Vulgan's a good name for a dwarf. Okay, so... Let's see... Oh, okay, okay. So I can, hmm, you know what, yeah, I'd rather have a little more skill and luck, and then, hmm, well he's a dwarf, so let's make him a treasure hunter. Actually, I think if we maximize the skills. Ah, that could actually be really helpful. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. After a long walk through the Outlands, you arrive at a junction which leads to the town of Silverton. Okay. Well, let's check it out. As you enter Silverton, something strikes you as not quite being right. The people look nervous. They are on edge. You notice that all the windows on the building have a great iron grill bolted over them. And the doors have been strengthened too. Hmm. You spot a tavern called the Old Toad. Perhaps the patrons of this tavern could shed light on the strange feeling in the town. Hmm. Let us enter the tavern. You enter the tavern but are somewhat surprised that no one wants to talk to you. I suppose everyone's racist towards dwarves. You ask the innkeeper for a room, but he ignores you and shuffles over to the great oak door of the tavern and pushes six large bolts into place. Huh. Suddenly, there's a loud knock at the door, followed by a voice shouting, Open up! This is Owen Cariff! The innkeeper slides the door open and a fat, balding man in a rich scarlet robe bursts into the tavern. He calls out to you urgently. Stranger, I must speak with you. Please, it's important. My name is Owen Cariff, and I'm the mayor of Silverton. We're in great danger. We are living under a curse, and, we, and it is I who must get rid of it. Okay, ten days ago, two messengers of evil rode into town on black stallions with fiery red eyes. Whoa. He asked for me my name, and when I came to greet him, they wanted to take... Oh, no, oh, wow. Take his daughter, yikes. And to stay with their master, Zanbar Bone. Okay? Zanbar Bone is quite possibly one of the more badass villain names. Also known as the Night Prince. And a badass title. The Night Prince was so angry he sent six moon dogs. Moon dogs. 
So, are they dogs powered by the moon? Dogs from the moon? Dogs that only come out in moonlight? I mean, what does that mean? Okay, each night the moon dogs return. We're unable to sleep through fear. Okay, and they want to rest. They want to put all their their hopes on me. And then there is a man called Nicodemus, who, for some reason, I'll never understand, lives in Port Black Sand to the west. Nicodemus? He could give me an amulet that could lift up the great block out of the rock! Or out of the ground. Man, I gotta rewatch Secret of Nim. Also, Nicodemus. You know what? If I ever have a kid, maybe I'll name him that. I mean, that's a badass name. Okay, the place is called the City of Thieves. It's home to every pirate, brigand, assassin, thief for hundreds of miles. And Nicodemus is a wise old wizard. Okay. So we get 30 gold pieces for the journey and a sword to use and keep. And since I have the treasure hunter skill, I gained another extra gold piece. And we have a short sword, which rolls a one weapon die in combat. Okay, so we have to find Nicodemus. So I wait until the coast is clear and step outside the tavern. We continue towards the town gate and leave Silverton, determined to reach Port Frolax Sand and find this man, Nicodemus. Okay, so... Head northwest to Port Black Sand. Oh, hey, that's convenient. Oh. So, let's see. This is our inventory. This is our quest. Let's head this way. As you approach the main gate, you are confronted by two guards. One of them says, Who would enter Port Black Sand uninvited? State the nature of your business or go back the way it came. You may tell me what should be taken to Nicodemus. Tell him you have stolen booty to sell. Or attack him. Hmm. I'm selling booty. You tell the guards you're here to sell silver chalices that you stole from the tavern in Silverton. And that you'll pay him one gold piece for his advice to where to go for the best prices. The guard looks at you suspiciously, saying, Let me look at those chalices before I admit you. Damn it! I didn't think you would fall for it like that. Um. The chalices are cursed! A likely story. I suppose you're the same as everyone else in the city. You may enter your peril, or buy my advice for three gold pieces. Uh, let's play it safe. If you're interested in sport, make sure you visit the Bay's Ball Pitch, north of the river. He makes a swooping gesture over your arm, and you walk past him. Well, glad we didn't have to fight. Sometimes it pays to be a little friendly. Hmm. The streets of Port Blackland are narrow and cobbled. Old and decrepit buildings line the streets. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So we get experience. So, I have no idea where Nicodemus is. Hmm. Let's check out Market Street. To the left, you see the entrance to a small herbalish, herbalist shop. Looking through the window, you see many sacks of different herbs on the floor. There's an open sign. Okay, let's check it out. Might get some advice from our local herbalist. Huh. A small bell rings as the door opens, and the creature wearing a brown apron over his clothing looks up to you from behind the counter. He appears human, and like, but has very ugly features and pointed teeth. You realize he's a crossbreed. Half man, half orc. Ask about Nicodemus. The man tells you that for one gold piece, he'll tell you everything he knows. Okay. The man orc takes your gold piece, spins it in the air with a flick of his thumb, catching him in the pocket of his apron. He then starts to pick his teeth with a sharpened twig. Finally, I know that he's a wizard. 
Really? Okay, I could fight him, but... I have a feeling that starting a fight in a city that's full of brigands who probably are waiting for an excuse just to kill me and take me. So that was a bad idea. Okay, let's try the spotted dog. You enter a dingy, smoke-filled room. Seated at the table are the most mean and shifty-looking rogues you have ever seen. Behind the bar stands an innkeeper wearing a grubby apron. He's quite old, bald, and has an ugly black scar running down his right cheek. So you know he's seen shit. You can talk to the innkeeper, sit down with some dwarves who are playing a dice game, sit at the table with two gums who are arguing, sit with three men who appear to be stabbing themselves with daggers. Wait, what? Three men who appear to be stabbing themselves with daggers. Um, are they playing the knife? You know, the finger knife game, and just really sucking at it. Uh, let's try sitting with my fellow dwarves. Uh, maybe I'll get an advantage. Yeah, hey, fellow dwarf. Oh, no, wait. Ah, a fellow dwarf. Come and join in our game. The dwarves are playing a simple dice game called Dwarf Dice, and they invite you to join in. Okay, roll your luck dice. If you roll an even number, you loot. An even number of luck symbols, you lose that amount. You roll an odd number of luck symbols, you win that amount. You roll no symbols, you lose all your gold. Okay, I'm in. Aha! I won a gold piece. Didn't get any info, but yeah, that's all right. Hmm curious about this. Whoa! Okay, test my luck. And I'm lucky! The chain pulls taut and the wolf jerks to a halt. You continue towards the house. Hello? Hmm. I don't want to cause any trouble. Hmm? Yeah. You spot something out at the corner of your eye. An event! A black cat startles you and runs across your path. A luck die is cursed. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Okay, we have... The street heading west is Key Street. The street heading east is called Clock Street. Market Street continues north. The crowd of people are heading up cheering loudly. Hmm. Oh. We got a pillory. We hear a trumpet sound. Suddenly the crowd starts to pelt the man with rotten fruit. Oh, man. That's harsh. Well. Hmm. I wonder what his crime was. Okay. He wants to play catch of cannonballs. He says whoever drops the cannonball must pay the other how many gold pieces they want to risk. You know what? I, I, I'll take him. Okay. How many gold pieces do I want to risk? You know what? I am going to risk three gold pieces. All right. Aha! I... <laughs> and I've unlocked the title The Strong. Ha <laughs> ha! Nice. You come to a brightly colored tent. Attached to it is a sign that reads Madame Star Clairvoyant. Madame Star is sat in front of the tent. She says that a glimpse of the future will cost you two golds. She also offers to remove any curses that that you might have or take a cursed item from you for 10 gold pieces. Well, one of my dice is cursed, so let's remove the curse. I am cleansed! And now I will read my fortune. Looking into her crystal ball, she seems to have gone into a trance. A pack of playing cards can hold more power than you could imagine. 
She looks away from her crystal ball and asks you to leave. Her face seems to be hiding something. Has she seen some dreadful fate awaiting you? You leave and continue north. Hmm. A deck of playing cards could be more powerful than you imagine. Hmm. Now what's going on here? Hmm. Okay, let's sit in the chair. I'm kind of curious. Whoa! We got a snake! Okay, let's take him on! And snakes inflict double damage due to poison. Okay, we fight! We roll the dice! Ah, excellent! I have slain the, the snakes and earned the title of the hard hitter. Interesting. All right, I'm a little curious. Where does this go? Hello. Oh, before you stands a white old man, a white-haired old man with a long beard, wearing long robes. He looks at you sternly and says, "Explain yourself to Nicodemus." Yes, I found you. I earned a dice upgrade. Uh, let's upgrade my luck. I earned the title of the novice. Though, I prefer the hard hitter. I explained to Nicodemus that I'm on a quest to end Zanbar Bones Reign of Terror on the town of Silverton. He says he's too old to help, but he'll tell you how to complete the quest yourself. He explains the items you need and where you need to go. And I've gained a quest. You need something special to protect yourself from the bone's entrancing stare. For this, you'll need to have a white unicorn in a yellow sun tattooed to your forehead. What? Okay. A white unicorn in a yellow sun tattooed to my forehead. Okay, I I'm sorry. I feel as though he's now trying to troll me. Like, you know, he just wants to see if I'll do it. Okay, let's get a tattoo. So, normal weapons will not harm him. So I had to pierce his heart with a silver arrow or throwing knife. This will paralyze him, but not kill him. Okay, so we need a silver throwing knife. And when he's paralyzed, he must quickly rub the ground compound of black pearl, hag's hair, and lotus flower into his open eyes. With luck, he'll decay before me. Okay, we gotta find a lot of stuff. The items you need for the compound might be found in the port black sand. They haven't heard of any hags roaming the city. They usually lurk underground, in sewers, other foul smelling areas. Okay, when I have everything I need, I must travel to the Dark Tower, which is north of Port Black Sand. You must not go there without these valuable items or you, I will surely perish. A silver throwing knife might also help against Zambar's bone servants. Okay. Well, thank you for the help. Oh, treasure! I spot something interesting on the ground. I find three gold pieces. Okay, let us take Harbor Street. Hmm. It's a pirate. You know what? Let's see. Maybe the pirate has something I'm looking for. You know what? Bring it on! Oh, that could have gone a little better. But he's not any better. Gotcha. Uh oh.
There we go. The pirates are empty except for a piece of stale bread. Wait, do I get the steel bread? The uh, stale bread? Nope. The barrels of wooden box contain rotten fruit and leg irons. Perhaps there's a slave. This is a slave trading ship. Well, if it's a slave trading ship, let's go rescue some slaves. Okay, let's creep into the cabin. Okay. Let's cut the pouch. And I woke him up. Okay, we gotta take him on. Oh crap. Alright, let's take on another one. Another dice, get another upgrade, and we get an achievement. So let's upgrade my skill. Yes, we got the black pearls we needed, which means we completed the quest. All right. So, Wonton Murder has saved us once again. But, I think now is probably a good time to call it. Now then, there is something I do want to point out. I actually think I want to continue doing a Let's Play of this. I legitimately want to continue this. So, how about this? If I can get... Oh, I'm going to lowball it at... Five likes, that's how I'll know if you guys want me to let's play this. Alright, you want me to continue this. If not, I'll be playing this on my own. But maybe you guys want to see the adventures of Fulgen, the hard-hitting dwarf. Anyway, as always, I'm Brent Tenkage. I hope you check out this game. Because the Fighting Fantasy series is really good. Like, it is a great choose-your-own-adventure story, with actual RPG mechanics included, and a good bit of luck in dice rolls, which, it is actually cool that there is that element of luck within the, uh, gate. And as always, like, subscribe, let me know what you think, hit that bell icon to hit more, and as for... I hope you give me some good vibes because this game, I need all the good luck I need. Bye!